Today we're going to be talking about the top 20 motorcycle movies. Let's go! Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. We do videos all about adventure motorcycling from the bikes we ride, the trips we take, the gear we use, tips, tricks, tutorials, everything under the sun when it comes to adventure motorcycling. You're going to find it on this channel. If that's the sort of thing that appeals to you, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications anytime we upload a new video, and hit that thumbs up if you like the specific video, it really helps out the channel. First off, let me get this disclaimer out of the way. When I talk about motorcycle movies, most of these have actual motorcycles in them. Some of them just make me feel like riding, and some of them have nothing to do with motorcycles at all but I just kind of feel more adventurous and more excited and intense and all the things that I feel on the bike, I feel from the movie. So the connection may not be there completely for everybody, but for most of these, you'll find a motorcycle in there. You'll find scenes that'll make you recognize motorcycles or feel good about motorcycles, but it's not a hard and fast rule that there has to be a motorcycle in it for it to be a great motorcycle movie for me. First off, we're gonna start with one of the greatest movies with a motorcycle in it that I've ever seen. It was probably the first movie I saw that had a motorcycle in it, and I absolutely love this character. It's just a phenomenal motorcycle character and embodies everything about motorcycling that you could ever want. And it's Raising Arizona. The villain is on a motorcycle. He is beardy and leather clad and greasy and dirty and gross and cigar smoking and carries grenades and is evil and sinister in the ways that motorcycle villains should be. And this is the prototypical bad guy motorcyclist in any movie ever. It's a great movie, it's hilarious, and the motorcycle scenes only make it that much better. Up next, we have a motorcycle movie that everybody's gonna know, and it's T2, Terminator 2, with Arnold Schwarzenegger on the back of a bike chasing down big rigs and being chased and huge jumps and leaps from bridges down to canals. It's just a fantastic motorcycle stunt movie and it has everything that you need to get excited about riding again. Although, I would not suggest doing anything they show in this movie in real life. I don't think you're gonna make it out. Next up, we have the quintessential motorcycle movie with Peter Fonda, Jack Nicholson, Dennis Hopper. This is a movie that embodied the motorcycle culture from that time. Some people may not have even seen it though because it's kind of a slow watch, a little bit difficult. It's not great subject matter. It's a sort of an avant-garde type of movie that Dennis Hopper and Peter Fonda came up with. I'm sure when they were on something, but it's also motorcycles top to bottom through and through. Uh, if you want to get back to the adventurous side of riding across the country when that actually meant something and going town to town where you were a rebel and kind of an outcast and a loner and not, you know, riding a $25,000 BMW, <laughs> it's a totally different category of what motorcycles used to be in the culture. And if you want to go back to that time, along with some really great music and kind of set the tone for what motorcycle lifestyle was eventually going to be, Easy Rider is the way to do it. After that, we have a movie that features a motorcycle, in fact, pretty prominently. They talk about the motorcycle, they have conversations around the motorcycle, they are on the motorcycle, riding the motorcycle, but it's just a, such a small part of what is otherwise a really broad movie but it's still a quintessential part, and that's Pulp Fiction. Everybody knows Zed's motorcycle and the ride off with Bruce Willis. It's just a, it's an awesome scene. It's an awesome part of it. It's an awesome character in that movie. And Zed's motorcycle is one of the greatest motorcycles ever to be featured in the movies. Whose motorcycle is this? It's a chopper, baby. Whose chopper is this? Zed's. Who's Zed? Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. When it comes to motorcycles in movies, more often than not, you're talking about great chase scenes, weaving in and out of traffic at high speed, and this next one is an icon in that category. I'm talking about Matrix 2. Now for this scene, they specifically built a mile and a half to three miles of private highway just so they could shoot this without any interruptions. And the chase scene is incredible. 
the motorcycle moves in here, the camera work, the stunt work, it's all amazing to watch. And if you've never wanted to get on a speed bike before, this may change your mind a little bit. Although again, I do not recommend any of this as it'll probably get you killed fairly quickly. These are all professionals riding in professional closed circumstances. So don't try any of this at home, but you can definitely watch it whenever you want. Keeping with that same theme of incredible motorcycle work in a movie, we're gonna go on to John Wick with just some great stunt riding, some great action. A lot of this was done on a green screen, but a lot of it was done practically as well. It's just an amazing, exciting ride to take along. Again, we're talking a lot about speed bikes here, but this is a fun, fun watch when it comes to motorcycle movies. Up next, we have an actor who does a lot of his own stunt work, even on the motorcycle in his movies. And we're talking about Mission Impossible and Tom Cruise. Now, I know there's a lot of people that love to hate Tom Cruise out there, and I'm sure there's plenty of reason to do so. But when it comes to the motorcycles that are used in Mission Impossible, I know they had some in two, they've used a lot in the further films like Rogue Nation and things like that. But these scenes are just awesome to watch. There's a ton of action. There's a ton of really incredible riding. A lot of it was done for real, not always by Tom Cruise, but a lot of it was. And the speeds that they're going and the things that they're doing just make this a really fun watch, especially if you've got any sort of kinship with motorcycles at all. The next movie features motorcycles, but in a really small capacity, but again, in the same way as Pulp Fiction, it is an integral part of the story. And I'm sure anybody who's seen it has wanted to go out and get a banana colored leather jumpsuit to be able to ride their motorcycle. And I'm talking about Kill Bill. Now, the scene here where it's a little bit of a chase scene, more of kind of a trailing scene, but you're on an all yellow motorcycle and an all yellow leather suit. It just, it looks awesome. It sounds awesome. It sets the stage for the battle that comes afterwards. And it's just a cool, version of having a motorcycle in a movie and showing how this character is a little bit rebellious, a little bit dangerous, a little bit scary, just because she's on a bike. For this next movie, I don't even know that you can technically call this a motorcycle. I mean, it's two wheels and you're riding it like a motorcycle, but it does things that I don't think any other motorcycle ever could or ever has, or maybe ever will. But when I'm talking about the Dark Knight and Batman's motorcycle that somehow just explodes out of the front of the tumbler and becomes a motorcycle and can ride up walls and around other items that you'd think that a motorcycle might not be able to do and it can roll. It's just a crazy motorcycle, but it's also a super cool scene, super cool riding. It, uh, he weaves in and out and underneath a semi truck, which is awesome. And if there's any bike that anybody could manufacture out there that maybe doesn't have the physical capabilities of actually being created, I would say that the Bat Bike is probably right up there, top one that everybody would love to have. So back in the day, motorcycles used to be about rebellion. They used to be about the, the bad boy and the tough guy and all leather and the rebel from society. And some movies followed in kind with that. Others used motorcycles as an escape vehicle. And this movie, the Great Escape is where Steve McQueen made his name as a motorcycle hero for cinema. And if you've seen The Great Escape and you've seen Steve McQueen's history and you know how much he's ridden to begin with, the fact that he is on a bike for a lot of this movie and some of the greatest scenes in this movie shows how important it is as a rider to bring motorcycles to the screen. And Steve McQueen was our best version of that for a very, very long time. So thank you, Steve McQueen. Thank you to The Great Escape and thank you for having this great motorcycle movie created. Another classic movie featuring motorcycles and featuring motorcycle lifestyle is The Wild One with Marlon Brando. Again, this is a time where motorcycles were not the sort of thing you would see at Starbucks, was not the sort of thing that the dentist next door had. It was something that only the rebels, only the dangerous guys were, were riding, only the dangerous women, only the gangs and, and the outlaws were a part of. And the wild one is a great feature of that time and that lifestyle when motorcycles were truly something dangerous and on the fringes of society. Up next, I'd like to feature one of my favorite movies that has motorcycles in it, which is James Bond. Now, 
So many different Bond movies have motorcycles, but the one where they're racing across the rooftops and riding all over on what seem to be sort of modified dirt bikes is probably the greatest modern feature of motorcycles that is out there. It's just incredible stunt work. All of it apparently is practical. It is super dangerous, super scary, super exciting. And the bikes that they're using and the riders that are doing it just created some of the greatest film motorcycle history that's out there. Now this next one is a movie that uses a motorcycle but isn't really a good movie and the motorcycling portion is kind of dumb because it's so impractical and seemingly insanely stupid but whatever it's it's on here. So Jurassic Park, where one of the Chris's is riding along in a raptor race and scooting in and out of essentially a full-grown forest and jumping over things that could not possibly be jumped by the bike that he's taking there. Just a really ridiculous version of a motorcycle in a movie, but it's also one of the biggest movies that's come out in recent years. So I guess having a motorcycle featured in there is a good thing for all of us, maybe? Okay, now we've come to the first movie that there's really no motorcycle in, but for some reason I feel like there is, or should be, or it gives me a feeling like a motorcycle could have been in it if they had just wanted it to, or I feel like I should be riding a motorcycle after watching it, or something like that. The emotion I get from this movie is similar to the emotion I get while riding. So, it's Ronin. It's a small movie with Robert De Niro and Jean Reno. It's a great movie about theft and car chases and, and probably one of the greatest car chases that's ever been. Just no motorcycles in it. If you like car chases and can imagine a motorcycle being in there, this may be the movie for you. For our next movie, we're talking about probably one of the greatest features of motorcycles and car chases and explosions that's maybe ever been on film and that's Mad Max Fury Road. Now, this George Romero film is just incredibly intense all the way through, start to finish. I mean, if you have popcorn, you're not gonna be eating it because your mouth will just be open watching this movie all the way through. It's, it's incredible. And the motorcycles that are featured in there with the jumps that they're doing over top of monster trucks and over top of 18-wheelers and dropping bombs and getting exploded and knocked underneath the, the semi, all of this stuff is just incredible. Most of it practical stunts, so these riders were actually doing a lot of this stuff, and it's just super exciting, super intense to watch. And if you have not seen Mad Max Fury Road as a motorcyclist, I demand you go do it right now. This next one may feel like a little bit of a stretch, but follow me here. So it's Harry Potter, and I know there are no motorcycles in Harry Potter. There's nothing that even remotely looks like a motorcycle in Harry Potter. But I have to imagine that riding a broomstick through the sky, playing Quidditch, has to feel a little bit like being on a motorcycle. And if kids are wanting to get that experience at a young age and wish that they could play Quidditch themselves and, and fly without walls or boundaries, maybe eventually they'll move into a motorcycle. Because of that, I feel like Riding a motorcycle is the closest that we can get to playing Quidditch and having that level of freedom to just move in any direction at any time, have that agility and that capability. So one of my favorite motorcycle movies without a single motorcycle in it is Harry Potter. Again, as I said, not every motorcycle movie for me has a motorcycle in it. And this next one has no motorcycles in it, but if you remember that a motorcycle is nothing but a steel horse, maybe horses count. And my movie that I love, that gives me the feeling of getting out and adventuring and especially seeing a lot more of the West is City Slickers. Now, if you've seen this movie, you know that they're on horseback most of the time. They're, they're pushing cattle through, through the West. And it makes me wish that I could get on a bike and get out there to Monument Valley and Utah and Colorado and all of these beautiful and extraordinary places that Going on two wheels is about as close as you're gonna to get to being on horseback. Now, I don't wanna do it on horseback. I think they stink, I think they move slow. It makes me super sore, but I will do it on two wheels and get the same adventure. If we had to think about motorcycles in the past or in the future or in a 
futuristic past, it seems like Return of the Jedi is a pretty good place to go. The speeder bikes they use in there, pretty similar to motorcycles and fast and agile and moving in and out of trees and, and dodging all sorts of other obstacles. Sounds like the sort of thing that we would love to be doing on adventure bikes. And the chase scenes that you get in there and the battles that you get on the back of the bikes seems like the closest thing we have to motorcycles in a futuristic past sci-fi type movie. So Return of the Jedi is one of my favorite motorcycle feeling movies. When I was coming up with this list, this movie kept popping into my mind, even though there's no motorcycles in it and really nothing that would evoke a motorcycle type lifestyle. But I also thought that this is just the feeling of danger and excitement and adventure that we all seek. And it's from Apocalypse Now. And it made me also think that maybe one of the songs that I need to get put onto my playlist is Ride of the Valkyries. For some reason, seeing all those helicopters come up and over the ridge reminds me of what it would be like coming up and over uh, into a valley or coming up and over and seeing the mountains in front of you. Like there just seems to be adventure and excitement in the ride the same way there is with the Ride of the Valkyries and the helicopters and the smell of napalm in the morning and, and Charlie Don't Surf. Like it just, it has a feeling for me and uh, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe nobody else will think that Apocalypse Now has a motorcycle feel to it. But for me, I really, I, I can't help but think it. Now for our last one, and probably the only one that features a sidecar, we're gonna go with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Now with Harrison Ford piloting and Sean Connery in the sidecar and the humor that's involved and the chases against the Nazis and putting a stick in the spoke of somebody's wheels as they're traveling fast and just exploding them off the bike. This is a great motorcycle chase. This is a great motorcycle action sequence. It has all the fun and excitement of riding a motorcycle along with the fear and evasion and escape that you need when you're being tailed by a bunch of awful human beings. And it's just a great motorcycle portion in what is otherwise a really awesome movie on top of that. So. If you need a motorcycle fix and also looking for a little bit of archaeology action, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade seems to be the way to go. Thank you for tuning in to my favorite motorcycle movies and the things that really get me jazzed up about riding. Some of them that have motorcycles in them, some of them that have nothing remotely close to a motorcycle. If you think I missed any of them, if you think there's some that are on this list that don't deserve to be, I get Apocalypse Now. Definitely leave a comment down below. If you think that I just missed one of the outstanding motorcycle movies, something that I didn't mention on there. Also, leave a comment down below. Now, I stayed away from specifically like motorcycle documentaries like Your Long Way Ups and uh, Better Off Tomorrow or Somewhere Else Tomorrow on Amazon. Like All of those are about motorcycles and they're strictly about motorcycles. I'm talking more about film and cinema type movies, but if you have one of those that you think I should be watching, also leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for tuning in. We've been having a really awesome 2021. I got off the horse a little bit over the past couple of weeks, so thank you for tuning in again. We will be churning out videos very soon here at a regular rate, so stop in, check us out, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notifications, and if there's anything else you wanna know from me, hit that comment down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Wow!